before you as a light in a dark world, Father. I stand before your people who are beacons of lights themselves. Today I pray for clarity and understanding. I pray today that you open the eyes of our understanding that we may know the hope of your calling. God, remove the scales from our eyes that we may be able to see our situation through your lens, Father, through your eyes. Father, open our hearts to let this word go down deep. So the enemy, Lord, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches will not come and pluck the word out of us, but it goes deep. And God, you will produce a 30, 60, and 100 fold crop. Father, as I just told your dear people, that is a responsibility that you placed on me to grow them, to mature them, to strengthen them, and to help them. Be all that you've created them to be. And so Lord, I call on the precious Holy Spirit to stand by me today and be my voice, speak through my words, oh God, and let them become your words. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. Let's jump in. His way still works. Say, His way, His way. still works. Still works. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 13. I'm just going to read quickly because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to spend some time. I'll tell you now. I'll be going from here um, right into uh, Proverbs chapter 2. But let's look at this because this is the foundation. have been talking about the anointing for the last probably four or five weeks. The anointing of God. The anointing what, what gives us the ability and the power. Just that little Little, little nugget I share with you about responsibility is, is even the ability of God is the anointing of God so you can respond. I'm learning more and more that we can do nothing apart from God. That's John 15, 5. Amen? And, and so what God has for us, if we're going to get all of the riches that God has for us, all of the blessings that God has for us, guess what church family? It's only going to come through the Spirit. Amen. And then because it has to come through the spirit, you and I are going to have to change the way we are doing life right now. You're going to have to make time for God. God is not going to press in on your busy schedule or make an appointment with you or send you a text and say, hey, it's been a while. Can we meet? You're going to have to make sure that God becomes the final authority and the priority for your life to sit and hear what he has to say. He knows you. He made you. He knows how you think. He knows how you learn. Amen. 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 So, so because of that, uh, we're talking about his way still works is that I'm looking through the scriptures that can build a foundation. Say foundation. foundation. On the inside of you so you can stand. Amen. You can stand. That's, that's my sole purpose is for, to help you to grow and to stand. And to withstand the, the adversities that comes your way. To be able to say no when you need to say no. And say yes when you need to say yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at some scripture that's going to talk about these spiritual things. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 9. In the, it's on the screen for you. <laughs> it says, but on the contrary... As the scripture says, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all that, say all that, all that, all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who what? Love him. Who what? Hold him in what? Affectionate, read with me, count, count my voice out a little bit, who hold him in what? Affectionate, reverence, what? Prompt, come on, can y'all read? Can y'all see it? Promptly obeying him and what? Gratefully, right? Recognizing, I only hear Pastor Raymond and Lisa. I'm going to stop until y'all get it together. Oh, it's a different version. Okay. Well, read y'all version. Put it up there, and then I'll be quiet. So I'm, I'm at fault. You see, I told you I made mistakes. Y'all looking at me like, what's your problem? I don't know what version you have. Can you put it back on the screen, please? I want you to see this because it's important that, uh, that you see the Word of God, hear the Word of God. So I'm going to let y'all read it. It's my version now? Oh, praise God. Let's read. But on the contrary, there we go. Go ahead. And And great. 
gratefully the benefits he has. So stop right there before you go any further. Do you see that? He's already made it ready. I don't care what you're facing today. The blessings that God has for you is already finished. And it's waiting on you. So what the question we need to be asking ourselves right now, how do I possess it? How do I possess what God has for me? He said he's prepared it, right? And it hasn't even entered into your heart. And it says who holds him in what? Affectionate reverence. So here's some keys. Y'all write this down as you see it. What must I do to possess these blessings and the things that I've not seen and I've not heard? I have to do something for God to release it. Amen? He's not going to just release this just because it's in the scripture. That's why it's dangerous for us just to confess scripture without having revelation knowledge on how we get that to work. Amen? You can't say my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus without you first doing the verses above and that's given. Amen. Paul told them that because of what they did. Amen. So we got to hold him in affectionate reverence and then we have to what? Promptly what? Promptly obey him and then we have to be what? Grateful. Recognizing that what the benefits that we're about to receive didn't come from us, but came from, yeah, you got it. Let's go to verse 10. Yet to us, are they ready? Yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit, for the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even what? Sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. What else does it say? And things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. Divine counsel. That means when you come to go to a council, you're going to get some information. You can really exchange and say divine wisdom and things hidden and it goes beyond man's scrutiny. God is so interested in us having what he has prepared for us that he refused to let, the, let human reasoning and, and the world system to tap into it. Though they think they're smart now, they have not gone to the bottomless part of God's thinking. Are you with me? The things that God has, the divine counsel, the things, these things are hidden. Now I wish they weren't hidden, but we wouldn't seek after God if, if it was just given to us. And not only that, anybody would be able to access it, and therefore you would not be able to differentiate between the church and the world. Come on, say amen, somebody. Why? Why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying it because we know that John 10 says the thief comes but to what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. And God ain't about to share his stuff with the devil. Y'all can say amen better than that. He's about to share his stuff with the devil because he's ready to make the devil, uh, uh, not only has he already brought him to his knees, but as a demonstration of God's power to make the world be in awe of our God. And how God is going to cause the world to be in awe of him is moving in and through your lives. He is ready to do supernatural things. He's, that's why when I was telling you, be not weary in well-doing. Because in due season, don't you have to understand, when other people have forgotten and then have moved on, God never forgets. That's why you keep reaping, because you done made, you done sowed some things that now you're just reaping because you're just mature enough now to handle it. He has to, he has to hold some things until we are prepared, until we're mature enough to handle it. Because he doesn't want, not because he doesn't trust you. If you're immature in certain areas, he will withhold it so the devil won't steal it from you. Yes. You know if you get something too early, you can lose it. Say amen. amen. So he holds it for you. Say so he's just holding it for me. Say so I'm just in between blessings right now. <laughs> he's waiting for me to mature. He's just holding some things for me. 
at the moment, say the moment, the very moment, the very second that you show for maturity in that area, boom, there it is. He releases it because it's not for him, it is already for you. So here's the challenge, church family. The challenge is for you and I to get to the place where we can make sure that we are affectionately reverencing God and ready to be prompt in our obedience. We're yeah. reverencing him. Because we know that the more we seek after him, the more he releases what he has for us. So it's not a dirty word to be able to say, you know, I'm praying, or I'm in prayer, or I'm fasting, or I'm seeking God. That's a good thing. Because you're trying to go to the deep things of God. Ah, that's, come on, I'm trying to get to my message. Let's go to, let's, 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 uh, let's go to verse 12. Let's jump to 12. It says, now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. So that's why we got to stop acting like the world because we don't have the spirit of the world. Stop acting like it. It ain't going to fit because you don't have that spirit anymore. That's like putting a, 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 a round circle in a, in, a, in a square hole. And you wind up wearing yourself out trying to what? Say it, because you know it. Say it. Trying to fit in. The only person going to get worn out is you. Because you're trying to take God's spirit to fit in with the world. And the world says, uh-uh, I don't want that. Don't care for it. Don't understand it. And you're like, well, it's good. But it's good. You're like, uh-uh, don't want it. Don't care for it. And you're trying to make it fit. It says here, we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God, given what? To us. That we what? Might realize. That's why there is a season to be quiet. Because you need to realize some things. Because if you don't realize what God is doing, you will curse something that is really meant to be a blessing. If you don't realize what God is doing, you won't be able to understand when he does something crazy because you're trying to use it and filter it through your natural human mind, your intellect, and you'll never be able to find God going through intellect. He made it that way. It says he's past finding out. Say past finding out. <clears throat> There's a scripture that says God's ways are what? Past finding out. But hey, here's the thing. Don't go and quote that out of ignorance and say God's ways are past finding out. No, it does say that. But it's revealed to his children. That's why Jesus could put in a parable when he was talking parables and around the Jews and the Sadducees and the Gentiles and the Greeks and all those people were there and the disciples just have to say that sometimes when God is speaking, you just need to be quiet and wait till you get later on when he can expound it to you because I'm using scripture to support what I just said because when they left the crowd the disciples asked them what did you mean by what you said which tells me that when God is speaking others can be around that cannot perceive what he's saying and God will hold the truth at the revelation until he gets you alone to give you an understanding so you can comprehend what the Holy Spirit wants you to know. And appreciate the gift of divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. So blessings are already bestowed on us. We just haven't recognized it. Or perhaps because we're looking for another kind of blessing. I told you the story when Wisconsin, how I was eating the word of God and, and, and digesting the word of God and praying and learning how to fast. And he had me around other Christians who were a little bit, uh, appeared to be mature, but they, won't, they weren't. And I was looking, I was younger age-wise, 
and, and younger in the spirit, okay? And so therefore, I was looking at them because they were older age-wise and had been in church in the, the born-again way, in the, in the way longer than I had been in there. So I started despising what he was feeding me. That's when he taught me that age has nothing to do with it. It's a person's hunger and ability to receive and comprehend what the Spirit of God is saying. Yes, there is something to say to those who have been in, in the Lord 20, 30. I've been in there 40, 50 years like Mama Alberta and, and, and uh, Mama Dorothy. Yes, there's something to attribute to them. I'm not taking away from the age. Are y'all walking with me this morning? I need you to walk with me in the Spirit. I'm not taking away from that. But don't think, because there is a misconception that unless you've been in church 50 years, there's no way you can understand God. That's a lie. Once you become born again, you get the same spirit. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Not another kind of spirit. The same spirit that Mama Dorothy had, the same one that Mama Alberta had, was the one I got in 1984. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so when God showed me his word, and I was eating his word and digesting his word, Captain, guess what happened? I, I started seeing the blessings that others had and I started despising the groundwork that God was doing in me. I was trying to put the cart before the horse. I was trying to have the car, the house, and all of these other things before I even had a true foundation of what faith really means and what it means to trust God. I'm trying to have a Mercedes and God said, you don't even know how to trust me for the Omega that you have that's falling apart to keep it right now. So we, we miss out on what God is doing or we misread it or, or we judge it before it's time. I heard a scripture say that don't judge nothing. Paul Says it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That don't judge nothing before it's time. Listen, God is not finished with you yet. I don't care what situation you're in or how tight it is. And believe me, we got some tightness going on in our life. But it doesn't matter how tight it is, how hard it is. God knows where you are and he will get you from point A to Z. If you just don't give up on him. If you don't quit. If you don't lose courage, discourage literally means losing courage. And so here, it's, he's telling us we need to realize and we have to comprehend and appreciate the gift of divine favor. Say, Lord, Lord I, appreciate I appreciate the gift, the gift of, divine of divine favor, which means every day you wake up, you should expect the favor of God. Here's the deal now. The thing is this. Because of our own intellect, we have come up with our own definition of what favor looks like. We think favor is just when you go into the store and your feet is hurting and you want an easy 